Despite being the main character and champion of Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang has died multiple times throughout the series. In fact, he's died more times than many of the villains in Mortal Kombat. And perhaps even worse, he's been replaced as the main character in the recent movies as well. The animated movie had Scorpion as the main character instead, and even robbed Liu Kang of his victory over Goro. And then for the 2021 live action film, Liu Kang was replaced by Cole Young as the main character. Which begs the question, do the creators of Mortal Kombat hate Liu Kang, and if so, what are the reasons why? If you love Liu Kang like I do, then please leave a like down below to show your support. And then keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell, that way you never miss a future video. And without any further ado, let's get started. Liu Kang's first death actually happens in Mortal Kombat 4, however, it's only in Shinnok's ending. And as a result, it's not canon, but even so, it's still worth mentioning that Liu Kang did die in a game before Deadly Alliance. However, even so, his death in Deadly Alliance is far more iconic because it happens at the very start of the game. Before you even get the chance to play anybody on the roster, the champion of Mortal Kombat is killed right before your eyes in a cutscene. And as a result, this opening blew everybody's minds. Players could not believe that Liu Kang would not be playable in a Mortal Kombat game. That was a very tough pill to swallow, although to be fair, the main villain also dies in Deadly Alliance. And that's likely because this game was meant to represent a fresh start for the franchise, a reboot, a clean slate, whatever you want to call it. The main villain and the main hero are both dead, so now it's time for a new story to unfold. However, here's the thing, later on it's revealed that Shao Kahn is not actually dead, unlike Liu Kang, who is absolutely dead. In fact, even Liu Kang's replacement, Li Mei, is killed in this very same game in her arcade ladder ending. So in a bizarre way, Liu Kang actually dies twice. And believe it or not, he remains dead in every game after, until Netherrealm reboots the series. Deadly Alliance? Dead. Deception? Dead. Armageddon? Dead. But there is an alternate costume where you can play as Liu Kang in his non-dead form. Which is nice for all the old school fans, but it is worth noting that Zombie Liu Kang was default. Which means for three solid games, Liu Kang was dead. However, there is a silver lining because Liu Kang does show up in several characters' endings. So at least Liu Kang fans got something, right? You couldn't play as the character, but at least he was still doing cool stuff in the background and still being a hero. And now it's finally time to talk about the reboot, starting off with Mortal Kombat 9, back then known as Mortal Kombat 2011. The story mode here pretty much retells the first three Mortal Kombat games, but oddly enough, it keeps on going. There's elements of Deception, Armageddon, and even Deadly Alliance in this story mode as well. And just like in Deadly Alliance, guess who dies? Ya boy, Liu Kang. That's right, the developers couldn't even give him one game without dying. He's dead in three games straight and then he's dead in the reboot also. Liu Kang cannot catch a break. And on top of that, he's killed by Raiden, the person who helped train and raise him. That's gotta sting for the champion of Earthrealm. And aside from dying, this game would also start the trend of trying to make Liu Kang evil. Because in his own latter ending, Liu Kang turns on Raiden and kills him, becoming the new god of Earthrealm. And that's because Raiden accidentally got everybody killed, alright? Let's not lie to ourselves. He didn't do it on purpose, but his choices in story mode led to most of the heroes dying. And that's why Liu Kang thought Earthrealm would be better under new management. Now thankfully in Mortal Kombat X, Liu Kang does not actually die in the story mode because he's a revenant the entire time, and that's a fancy way of saying zombie with more letters. But that's only in story mode. Liu Kang is not safe from the arcade ladder endings because in Jason's ending, he gets killed again. Which is ironic because Liu Kang invited him there in the first place only to be killed by him. He got deaded. So as you can see, even zombies aren't safe in the Mortal Kombat series. You can still get killed in an arcade ladder ending. And now finally it's time for Mortal Kombat 11, where things get interesting because Liu Kang exists in two forms, his past form and his revenant form. And to my utter disbelief, he almost dies again to his zombie self, but thankfully it's a fake out. His soul gets taken away, but not all of it, that way he's still technically alive. But just barely, your boy's hanging on by a threat, and that's because if Liu Kang dies without Quan Chi being around, then the revenant Liu Kang would not canonically exist. And zombie Liu Kang knows this, which is why he leaves a tiny bit of Liu Kang soul intact. But thankfully Raiden comes back to undo his mistake and save Liu Kang while also turning him into Fire God Liu Kang, the coolest Liu Kang's ever been in the entire series. And to make things even better for the cherry on top, he finally gets a happy ending with Katana. This ending, mwah, just chef's kiss, I love it so much. But then Aftermath happened and took a big dump on everything. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a big fan of Aftermath. I enjoyed playing as the DLC characters and the villains, but everything outside of that I'm not a fan of. I don't like 
like watching Liu Kang lose to everybody, including Shao Kahn. I don't like seeing his legs get broken, and I especially can't stand the idea that he would stand back and let everyone die just to give himself a slight advantage. Liu Kang would never do that. It's completely out of character. And then as the final nail in the coffin, you're given the option to play as the villain and kill Fire God Liu Kang. And because there's no sequel yet, we don't know which ending is canon, which means Liu Kang dying could be the true ending. Once again, the champion of Mortal Kombat and the main character is killed in a cutscene. And I do believe that covers every time Liu Kang dies in Mortal Kombat, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Because Liu Kang dies so much in the Mortal Kombat series, many fans have theorized that the writers themselves actually have it out for him. And honestly, there could be something to those rumors. So let's discuss the most popular theories the internet has for why creators might hate Liu Kang. Theory number one is Ed Boon himself. Ed Boon's favorite character in the series is Scorpion. However, in spite of this, Scorpion has never gotten to be the main character in any of the games. Instead, it's always been Liu Kang or a brand new character like Cassie Cage. And as a result, some fans theorize that Ed Boon killed Liu Kang so that Scorpion could step in as the main character. However, I think this theory is the least likely. Another big theory is that Liu Kang is just too nice to be the face of Mortal Kombat. The game's about grit and gore and mutilation. And Liu Kang is the opposite of that. He is a monk who wants peace above all else. In fact, in the very first game, his fatality wasn't even lethal, and that was on purpose. The developers wanted to show the players that Liu Kang was the least violent character on the roster. And in fact, even in Mortal Kombat 2, Liu Kang doesn't directly kill the player. He either drops an arcade cabinet on them or transforms into a dragon, and the dragon does the deed instead of him. So once again, Liu Kang is the least violent character in the entire game. And many fans theorize that's why Liu Kang was killed in Deadly Alliance. That game was meant to be darker and creepier with much higher stakes. And as a result, the kind-hearted Liu Kang had to go. He had no place in this grittier, darker timeline. And if I'm being honest, that theory makes way more sense. Because not only was Liu Kang a goody-goody two-shoes, but he was also the unintentional Mary Sue of the series. And I don't use that term lightly. I think it's very overused, especially on YouTube. But the simple truth is Liu Kang was defeating everybody. Ever since Mortal Kombat 1, he was the hero who defeated the villain, which would be fine for a Saturday morning cartoon or even a movie series. However, Mortal Kombat is a fighting game, and you want to make sure all the characters come off as intimidating and powerful, which is almost impossible with Liu Kang on the roster. It's kind of like Superman with the Justice League. Even though every member of the Justice League is powerful and amazing in their own right, Superman just stomps on their powers with his own because the guy's just too overpowered. And it was the same case with Liu Kang. The guy was defeating every single villain in the franchise, and I think Midway wanted to mix things up. So instead of making a brand new character like Netherrealm did, they just got rid of the main character, straight up killed him off. And while that may have been a bit extreme, I will say this, as a player, I was worried from that point on. I thought my favorite character might be killed at the start of Deception and then Armageddon too. Literally with each new game, I was worried one of my favorite characters would die in the opening cutscene. Which I think was amazing looking back on it. I have to give it to Midway. The stakes really were raised after Deadly Alliance. As a kid, I really did think that any character could die in the Mortal Kombat series, which is honestly how you should feel. Even though I love the Netherrealm games, I have to admit they feel too much like a kid's cartoon. Almost none of the heroes die, or at the very least, they aren't in danger most of the time. A villain walks into frame and I don't care. I know they're not going to win. And I can't say the same thing for Deadly Alliance or any of the other games that were made by Midway. I felt actual stress and dread in those games. No character was safe, and that's impressive. And all of that was possible because the writers were bold enough to get rid of Liu Kang. Even in the reboot, Liu Kang is killed off and then pushed to the side, no longer the main character of the series until Mortal Kombat 11. And once again, this happens in the movies too. In Scorpion's Revenge, Liu Kang is also sidelined and no longer the main character. And then to rub salt on the wound, Scorpion also gets credit for defeating Goro, which had always been Liu Kang up until that movie. Which is mad disrespectful, but thankfully Liu Kang was the main character once again in Battle of the Realms, even though I hate that movie to a million pieces. Finally, we have the live-action Mortal Kombat movie, where Liu Kang is replaced by Cole Young, which was very confusing to veteran fans of the series. Because not only is Cole Young a made-up character that never existed in any of the games, but his role could have easily been replaced by Johnny Cage. However, according to the writers, they didn't want Johnny Cage to be the hero because he was a white guy. And I'm not making that up. They went on record saying that. Which, you know, whatever. It's their movie. But the thing is, if you wanted a non-white character to be the hero, Liu Kang is right there. Why not use Liu Kang? Once again, it's like the writers hate Liu Kang, and I'm not 100% sure why. It's very likely Liu Kang's gonna be the main character in the next movie anyway, and then on top of that, Johnny Cage is coming back as well. However, there is the possibility that Liu Kang 
is killed in the next movie, and I just realized that, so I'm gonna cross my fingers and pray that Liu Kang is spared in the upcoming movie. And while I'm here praying to the Elder Gods that Liu Kang is spared, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Why do you think the writers might hate Liu Kang? And then while you're down there, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It really does help my channel out a ton. And then keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell, that way you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.